We're shaking and baking. All right, so I realize I've never put up a video on how I do aliens, and it's really not much different than anybody else, but why not throw it up and talk about it? So we'll start out with our decor. Um, I'm doing up some 2736 and 90 aliens, uh, and 80 on the wraps. Now, for my decor, I actually go up one gauge. Um, it makes life a lot easier when doing no stretch to go up, or I'm sorry, down a gauge. So, we're doing 27 aliens, but this is a 26 gauge shot. So, we'll fuse this up. Got your bag, or whatever you use. Some people use tape. Okay, before we cut it off, you want to put that in reverse. You want to go in reverse until you start to see your material slightly bunch up. And I'm not talking crazy bunch up, but you can watch the end here start to come this way. At that point, that's when you're good to snip it off. The whole point of putting it in reverse is to free up your Clapton on your core so that you can take it off with ease. Uh, this is usually where some people struggle if they don't backspin. Um, it, well, it gets stuck. Secondly, when you're cutting your end, do not use flush cuts or side cuts. Don't use these. Scissors. Scissors make the most consistent cut. You can use cutters and then it wads it up and then you can't do that. So, put your drill in the opposite direction, run it for a minute, not a minute, run it for a little bit, and then you're gonna make your cut using scissors. Something really, really sharp. Okay. I use a vice, a jeweler's vice, only, let's see if that's in the shot. I use a jeweler's vice here, just to straighten my stuff. Um, when doing three core aliens, I really like to use the, use the chuck of the drill or the lathe, just because it keeps everything very, very in line right where we want it um the jeweler's vice is well it works great for multi-core builds uh four five six core but for traditional three core you don't need it you don't need it uh we did a 39 inch decor so we're doing 25 inch uh core shots i already Bun one up before I started this, so we're gonna cut six. Straighten your wire, you can do many different ways. Um, you can use two pairs of pliers, 
You can use actually using the chuck of the drill and spinning it. With N90, it's so soft that even with 26 gauge, you can give it a little pull and it straightens right out. So I'm trying to do that right here. Obviously, you take one under your wire, clamp down on it in a little vise, other end of the wire, pair of pliers. That's it. Slight little pull. It doesn't take much to get the roll or the memory out of the wire. You're not looking to stretch it per se, where it actually is changing the diameter of the wire. You're just getting that little roll out of it. Again, little pinch, little pull. When you're first learning aliens, it's always best to prep more material than you need. Um, reason being is there's going to be hiccups, there's going to be mistakes, and it's time consuming to load up another decor, clapped in another shot of wire, decor it, set it back up all over again. You're better off just spin two. Spin two, prep two. That way if you have mistakes or errors on your first one, you've already got that next one ready to go. If you don't make mistakes, then bonus. Spin up your other shot and set it off to the side in a Ziploc bag or however you store it. Save it for another day. But I'd always encourage, try starting with setting up for two. We're setting up for two because I need two. Next we're going to talk about um, core holders, right? also known as alien makers. Um, these are from Patino's, but I also have ones from USA ohm meters. And when you get these things, um, it doesn't matter who you get it from. When you get them, they do not work as intended out of the box. There's a break in for them. Um, I don't use four, five, six of them. I only use one just to kind of keep my um, keep my flow going. But I will talk about how you break these things in. What we did there is we just snipped our ends with a pair of scissors so that it would go on easy. Then I took a pair of nylons, made a little bend at the end to make my L to go into my chuck. I separated the three wires into a triangle so it goes into the chuck perfectly. Snug it up good. And we're going to take our alien maker slider all the way back here. Right at the start. Grab your wires and pinch them nice and snug. Some people get crazy with how they terminate the wires to the swivel. I, I don't. I literally pass them through, I fold them over, and I'll take a pair of pliers and right it tight to the swivel, I'll give them a pinch. All it does is it creates a spot like that, a hard spot where it's not gonna pull off. We're not putting that much tension on it. Get your tension, you're good to go. So when you get these things, right, See how mine moves nice and easy. When you get them, yours aren't going to move that smooth. So what I do is I take a very porous material like Canthal. So these are actually intended for 26. So I took three pieces of 26 gauge Canthal. I chucked it just like this. I got one of these guys on and I just literally sat here and ran it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until it moved freely. Um, USA ohm meters, I broke those in the same way as these, um, and 
they work fantastic for their intent after that. But right out of the box, um, they're gonna need uh, they're gonna need a little tinkering. So for no stretch, basically get the gap set where I want it. A nice little firm grip with my uh, index finger and my thumb. And we try and maintain that distance. That distance will vary as you go. Sometimes you're a little understretched, sometimes you're a little overstretched. Um, you can compensate that with moving your hand forward or backwards and also advancing it closer to the swivel or the uh, spacer or back towards the chuck depending most know that aliens you always lead you're a little ahead of a 90 per se um, and it's it's not very much but once you get going you'll notice that little alien maker for the most part if your three cores stay flat it will it will just walk right along the only time it will um, not move is when you get some twist down at your termination end that usually happens about 15 to 18 inches into a 25 foot shot you'll start to hear it or see it where it's it's not moving freely anymore when we get to that hurdle I'll show you what I do I found with aliens too is that speed speed is everything and I'm not saying go wide open but I'm also not saying go as slow as a turtle so part of making aliens uh, is giving yourself the best opportunity to have a slight mistake and get away with it so speed helps dictate that where sometimes you could be slightly understretched and it will still fuse perfectly. Sometimes you can be slightly overstretched and they'll still fuse perfectly. It's mainly getting comfortable with whatever that speed is for that material. I can go faster with 27 than I can 26. I can go faster with 28 than I can 27. Um, it's just getting comfortable with it. When I started out, I was doing a 19 to 20 inch decor and doing 12 inch shots of aliens. I felt that that was a good length to start practicing with. You didn't have so much waste if, uh, if you had issues. And every once in a while, it's just not, something's gonna be wrong. It doesn't matter how many sets of coils you build, you're gonna have days where something in your process is just not quite right. You're not holding your mouth right, you know, and you gotta take those in stride. You gotta push through them, you know, and accept that nobody's perfect. Doesn't matter how many sets of coils you build, doesn't matter how much practice you do, you know, think about the best, the best in the world in professional sports, you know, watching a guy who dings 50 home runs a, a season go up and strike out, you know, he's having an off day. The same applies with building coils. You're going to have days where you feel like you, you are invincible. And then the next day you're going to be humbled to the point where you're not even sure what to do at that point. You just never give up. You gotta be more stubborn than the wire. So right now, we're starting to kind of bunch up and it's an audible sound that you can hear from my perspective, not so much over here, but it'll start kind of jumping. And what we got is we've got one twist here and one twist here. Um, I always end up with a slight amount of twist and I think that's due to no stretch just because we're putting a little more tension on the cores. But what you can do is you hold your swivel and rotate your chuck. And 
what that does is it takes the, sw the, the twist out of your wire. What you can also do is advance your, your core holder manually. You want to resume tension on your wire. And you can do it kind of the old school way where, you know, if you're using a key ring or, you know, a, a wire slider, whatever it is, you can just kind of advance it that way. You just want to make sure that before you start that drill again, that you have that same feel on your wire. Otherwise, you'll end up with an unsightly gap. And if you're building for somebody else, you don't want that. If you're building for yourself, well, yeah, it doesn't matter so much. But the, the best practice for that is the hand that's holding the wire. Keep that right in the same spot. Try not to move that hand. You can move the rest of you. You move your body, you can move your, your hand that's running the drill. Try and keep that other hand right in the same spot. It just keeps that memory. You know, you don't have to think about it. It's subconscious at that point. It's just, okay, my hand's here. I'm holding my wire. We're doing our thing. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Then you get to the end, you run into that twist, and you're done. And now, we, we backspun this little bit, so we put some twist over here instead of at this end. All you do for that is you get a pair of nylons, grab onto it firm, and pull towards the um, swivel while doing it. That'll allow you to get that roll out of your wire. And it doesn't have to be perfect. When you're wrapping aliens anyways, it's going to roll. So you're just looking to kind of pretty it up a little bit. So that was a, a 24 inch shot. I always cut a little bit longer. I'd rather snip off one inch off the end that doesn't have material than fall short by two or three inches. So I'll run through this one more time. I got this other shot here. I'm gonna take my three ends and I make them all parallel to each other. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut that, just the end of it off. I mean, eighth of an inch maybe. Just so that this goes on that much easier. Just like that. I mean, it's completely effortless when these are broken and when you're dealing with properly prepped material. Just like any type of coil building, your prep work is the most important thing to success. Again, I see a lot of people when they set up for aliens do some really crazy stuff with the way they terminate to the chuck and they do all the stuff and it I don't want to say it doesn't matter but really so long as you have quality swivels and you're terminations are made where it's not going to come apart you don't have to sit there and lap it over itself and wrap it around and do all this silly stuff it's not going to change anything we just slide it through just like that fold it over give it a little pinch grab your pliers give it another pinch that's it that's it we got decent tension on this it's not going to go anywhere. You don't have to do all these crazy things. How you terminate to that isn't necessarily going to contradict how much twist you get in your material. The quality of your swivels are going to do that. Um, we run Crocs, size five. You can't beat them. You cannot beat them. They are expensive but they last forever. I can't say forever. In a builder's world, they outlast anything. Anything. So, get yourself quality swivels. Set yourself up to not succeed every single time you build and be okay with that. And you're, you're gonna end up having success. It's just a patience game, that's all. Patience and a clear understanding of what you're trying to do.
the faster you go, the less tension you need to put on your wire too when you're doing no stretch. Got some twist. Get that out of the way. There we go. So again, I know there's plenty of videos circulating around how to make aliens and so on and so forth, but I want to just take a minute, talk about how I get down. Um, you know, there's all kinds of quote unquote tools out there to, to do it, but when it comes right down to the nitty gritty, um, your setup is key. Your prep work, your setup, all that. Nothing else. Again, I use a core holder. Only only one. Just to keep everything nice and square. Other than that, um, I used to use a key ring. But at high speeds, key rings tend to go flying off. And not that they're super dangerous when they go flying off. But it usually causes absolute failure. <laughs> so, hopefully... Uh, Hopefully get some, somebody gets some value. All right. 